What's up guys, Twig46 here, and today I'm going to look at the Bowfighter Mark 21 specifically, but in general just how to Bowfighter as part of a subscriber request. So with this thing, um, there's a couple different variants that you can uh, play in War Thunder. You got the VIC, basically only has the 20 mils Hispanos. Um, you got the Bowfighter Mark... 10, which has the four 20 mil Hispanos, as well as six, uh, the little tiny 7.7 .7 pop gun machine guns, four on one wing, two on the other, and then you have the Bowfighter Mark 21, which is the one I've been playing the most, um, which has the four Hispanos and the four uh, 50 cals, which is nice. Um, let's see. And most people think um, that with all this firepower in the front, it's going to be a good idea to get into head-ons. I would actually highly uh, avoid head-ons. I would advise against it. A um, couple reasons why. Um, first of all, uh, you'll see it as the plane flies, but this thing is extremely unwieldy. So unless your opponent is very generous and is just going to sit in a straight line, if he moves a little bit, you're going to have a hard time uh, getting your guns on target. And even if you do get your guns on target, there are, at least in this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guns on this plane. Shooting all those for any length of time is going to rock your plane around. It's going to throw off your aim a little bit. At least that was my experience. That, or I might just suck at shooting this. I don't know. You can uh, be the judge. Uh, it, must, it might also been the uh, ammo choice, but enough of that. Um, let's see. Head-ons. The other thing is uh, take a look at this plane uh just in a head-on this is what you'd see all right um what do you see i see a giant cockpit i see two giant engines um very easy to hit and large wings on the front center mask and pilot snipe you every time and uh pretty much about 95 percent of the head-ons i've been in uh at least one of the engines has caught on fire or been critically damaged where i had to return to base and it's actually stopped spinning mid-air um, another thing is, is, looking at it head-on, your rockets are facing, um, they're basically looking like this. It doesn't look like it, but that's how they, that's kind of how they fire. Is they don't really, they don't really fire, um, in like this. They kind of fire out. At least that's my experience. Um, I have a couple of rocket shots I can show you. Um, but you're probably bored with all this stuff, so let's go ahead and jump into a um, couple of combat situations, show you how I've made this plane work, uh, despite all of its limitations, and I'll walk you through that. So let's get started. Alrighty, so here we are, up in the sky, um, about 2,800 meters. You don't really need to take this thing any higher than 3,000 meters, just because, um... It doesn't climb that well that uh, at this height, and it doesn't perform well. And if you're going to be diving, um, the compression starts to happen around 450. So you're going to want to watch out for that. Um, so this is basically the technique on how to bow fighter. Um, if you're going to use it as a fighter, as I'm talking about the compression where it um, it doesn't want to stay on target. But um, basically, it's a support fighter. Um, you want to make sure you're always with your teammates and let the teammates do um, do the distracting while you do the killing. It's kind of one of those punk planes, but this is what I'm talking about with the compression. It's um, really hard to get this plane on target, and this would have been an amazing kill shot, but as soon as I started to, and then they, they just knew, so that potentially could have been two really easy kills right there. But, um, alas, it was not meant to be, and uh, these guys shot me down because, you know, there's like five of them. So, next clip. Alright guys, here we are in the next clip. Um, again, same technique, having my teammates around. This one's a little bit of, of a fair fight, so I'm going to have to work a little bit harder. Um, trying to uh, set up on somebody. I decided to go after the Corsair because um, he's not very maneuverable. I stand a better chance killing the Corsair than anyone else. And I'd go in ahead and take my first shots. He saw me coming, so he's able to avoid. And he does exactly the right thing and turns down. And I would follow him if I was stupid, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to use my speed and do this uh, very, very quick uh, turn 
you can only do it once and but it can flip it around like a zero it's pretty sweet and since I got altitude doing it I was able to um, maintain my speed so I'm gonna go ahead and use that to catch up to this guy and this is where things start to get a little bit tricky because that compression is gonna keep keep it difficult for me to um, stay on target but as we close in it's gonna become apparent it's right about here yep see it's not gonna turn I don't wanna roll all the way but eventually um, he yep I commit and he, he sees it, he knows, and then he just loops around and just, just goes the other way. And that's a problem. So drop throttle, climb a little bit, stay on him, lag spike, yay. And going back down, taking your shots, and right about here, should have been the kill shot, unfortunately I suck at shooting this thing or it was an ammo type issue uh, as I was using the armor piercing for the Hispanos. See that? He should have died. Unfortunately he didn't and now we're in trouble. Oh well, yeah, hopefully not, but I know how this ends, you don't. So couldn't quite get my guns on target and he's gonna loop down Spin back around. He's getting me in a split S. He's going to win every single time. And this, is how you, this is how you don't bow fighter. <laughs> I could have died right there from a pilot snipe. Um, yeah, if he, w if he wanted to continue that fight, he could have continued that fight. He could have killed me instead. He uh, ran back to his base. And I eventually killed him. And then uh, died from the AA. So that's uh, how not to bow fighter. Don't split S. Um, do the other techniques that I showed you with the up and then do that sharp turn when you have a lot of energy But let's uh, go ahead and go to the next clip and see what else is in store Alrighty guys in this clip we're going to take a look at the rocket accuracy um, I would recommend getting a lot closer and Going ahead and shooting all of them off at once because as you can see uh, I managed to kill him, but he got my engine on fire that's never a good thing, because then my plane exploded. So, rockets, get in close, fire off. Alright, so, next clip. Uh, we're going to show you why you don't want to fight Focker Wolf 190s, because Focker Wolfs will always have the speed advantage on you. Uh, they're just a faster airplane than you. Here's a snap head on, so why it's very difficult to do it if they're not flying in a straight line ex right towards you, because your plane will just not be able to respond. Um, let's see here. We're going to flip around. We're going to try to engage some more Fokker Wolves. I would strongly advise you to not do this. I was just doing it for the sake of seeing if I could. Again, another kind of head on. Um, not really. Not really the strength or the this plane's forte, as it were. So there's another head on. Oh, we got him. There you go. That was the um, that was the five percent there. <laughs> but yeah, I would strongly recommend not fighting the bow fighter like this. You're it's uh, you're chasing the dragon. Do it if you do it that way. Um, going right in the next clip. Um. Let's see, this is the head-ons, the head-on bit. Just to give you an idea of what you can expect when you're doing head-ons. That was one of them. Not too impressive, did not kill, got my engine shot. And here we have another head-on, this time with a Fokker Wolf. And, yep, he did that little loop, got my wing shot off, did not even hardly... Alrighty, you ready for another heads up example? This time with the Ki-61. Take my shots. Trying to plant the target there. I think I got him. He's on fire, but then again, so am I. Again, don't get in head-ons with this thing because the engines are big targets. And yeah. So I got I did get him, but he got me. I'll descend to the ground because I cannot control this plane and I will die so uh, let's get on to the next clip shall we alright let's try it with the P51 
Straight up heads up. Trying to hit him. Got a critical hit. Again, he hit my engine. On fire. Dead. Alrighty guys, so that's uh, pretty much why I do not do head-ons in the bow fighter anymore. The engines are just too vulnerable and you're too prone to pilot snipe. But um, let's take a look at an article I found um, about the bow fighter on the history of war dot, dot org. And it says, quote, it was quickly realized that the bow fighter would make an ideal night fighter and had the performance to catch up with the German bombers. Although the main German bombers would appear to have the same speed as the bow fighter, they would normally be traveling at a slower cruising speed to maximize the range. Because historically, battles didn't last for an hour, they lasted all, all the time. Um, and the internal space to carry the earlier versions of the AI radar. Basically, that's what the little nub on the top is. Um, so this thing would intercept in the night and be uh, quick and stealthy. Anyway, uh, and next quote, as the time went on, the bow fighter would serve as a night fighter, intruder, anti-shipping aircraft, torpedo bomber, and ground attack aircraft. In many ways, its career resembled that of the Mosquito, the aircraft that would supersede it, but never entirely replace it. So, based on um, what we just heard, um, sounds like this thing was an interceptor, a bomber interceptor, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, granted, we had the altitude advantage on this guy, but, um, yeah, that's how, that's how you have to play the bowfighter, I think, is, um, go after the bombers, um, and using your quote-unquote radar, which everyone has, but really, it's more about map knowledge, um, I know where bombers are gonna go, and you know where bombers are gonna go, so you can use that, that knowledge to simulate the radar, and intercept them because it is a quite a quick plane um, for its tier but I think you'll be finding that uh, the bombers are going to be your main targets um, you can also get into some fighter scraps like I said um, going for the slower um, planes that can't turn can't uh, maneuver as well as some of the other fighters like the Spitfires but if you're going up against a Corsair or you know like a P-40 stuff like that yeah go for it knock yourself out again um, bomber interceptor goes down really quick, really easy. Just watch out for your front engines, and that's how you bow fighter.